along with the written consent the directors are supposed to buy the qualification shares which are necessary to become the director a company where it has a shareholders from the general public so we call it as a public company almost 90% of the issue should be subscribed by the public so this is the specified number given by the registrar of company hello everyone i am purnima faculty in the department of commerce vidyashram pre university college temple of excellence welcome to this session on formation of company so this is session 2 So let us see what this session holds for us. In this session two, we will be having a discussion on the documents required for the submission for uh, incorporation of a company. Then we will also be looking into the various other procedures involved in incorporation of a company. Now let us have a look into the what are the documents required to be submitted for incorporation of a company. So first one is. memorandum of association duly stamped signed and witnessed now the first document as i had mentioned in my previous sessions the memorandum of association has to be submitted now the memorandum of association will have various clauses like the name clause the capital clause the uh, situation clause the object clause etc and all these clauses which includes the memorandum of association it should be duly signed by the concerned authorities and then uh, it should be stamped properly stamped and then signed and witnesses there should be witnesses for the signature of this memorandum of association so memorandum of association is one of the most important documents to be submitted for incorporation then now the next document to be submitted for incorporation is the articles of association so this articles of association also should be duly stamped and witnessed as in the case of the memorandum of association but then we should notice that this articles of association for a public company they can follow the table a and in lieu of that instead of uh, producing the articles of association they can also issue a prospectus in lieu of the articles of association then the next one is the written consent of the proposed directors to act as directors and an undertaking to purchase qualification shares now the third document to be submitted is the written consent of the directors now we all know that the company cannot run without the directors now the first set of directors who are there in the company they will be nominated by the promoters and these promoters are, have to take a written consent from the directors stating that they have agreed to be the director of this new company now the written consent of the directors is essential document to be submitted along with the other two documents now along with the written consent the directors are supposed to buy the qualification shares which are necessary to become the director so in case any of the persons wants to become a director then he is supposed to buy the qualification shares the specified number of shares are there and he has to purchase so many shares in order to become the director of the company then the next document is the agreement if any with the proposed managing director manager or the whole time director so the next document to be submitted is the agreement with the managing director so whoever is been appointed as the managing director by the promoter so he has to write an uh, there should be an agreement between the promoter and the managing director so the agreement between the company and the managing director becomes an important document to be submitted for incorporation next a copy of the registrar's letter approving the name of the company the name of the com- company has to be approved by the registrar of companies now this name of the company whatever the approval has been given by the registrar so that approval letter should be submitted along with the other important documents for incorporation then next document to be submitted is a statutory declaration affirming that all legal requirements for registration have been complied with this must be duly signed 
documents. Now, the next important document is a statutory declaration. Now, what is a statutory declaration? So, in the statutory declaration, the promoters uh, say that they have complied with all the rules and regulations laid down by the registrar of companies. So, they have followed all the rules and procedures and they will be signing in a document which will be called as the statutory declaration. The next important document to be submitted along with the other documents for incorporation is a notice about the exact address of the registered office may also be submitted along with these documents. However, if the same is not submitted at the time of incorporation, it can be submitted within 30 days of the receipt of the certificate of incorporation. Now, so we should understand that these documents along with these documents, we also have to uh, tell the exact address of the company. So, this ad if the address is not available at the time of incorporation, then the company can always give that ad address within 30 days of incorporation of the company. Then the last one is the documentary evidence of the payment of registration fees. So, when the registrar is satisfied about the completion of the formalities of registration, a certificate of incorporation is issued to the company which signify the birth of the company. So, once all these documents have been submitted, then the registrar will be fine. So, he will just uh, have a look at all the documents which have been submitted and along with that document, we need to show the receipt which has been paid for the registration fees. So, whatever the registration fees the company has paid, so that fee receipt should also be uh, submitted along with the documents and then if the registrar is satisfied with all the documents submitted, then he will issue a certificate of incorporation. Now, what is this certificate of incorporation? When the registrar issues the certificate of incorporation, it means that the company has taken birth or the company has been formed. Then let us see the effect of the certificate of incorporation. So, a company is legally born on the printed date on the certificate of incorporation. So, we should understand that once the registrar gives us the certificate of incorporation, it means that company has already come into existence or it is the birth certificate of the company. So, the company has been formed and now it is ready to just activate or it is ready to run. Now, both public and private companies are required to obtain the certificate of commencement of business within 180 days of its incorporation. So, within 180 days of the registration, so once the promoters have finished with all the registration formalities, then they have to see that they receive the certificate of commencement of business from the registrar. Now, this for this, they are giving us six months, that is 180 days. So, within 180 days, they have to get this certificate of commencement of business. So, whether it is a public company or a private company, so both of them in order to commence the business, they have to get this certificate of business within 180 days of its incorporation. Then next, once the certificate of commencement of business is issued by the registrar of companies, it can undertake their business operations. So, we should understand that the company has been formed and it is ready to do its work. So, whatever the objective of the company, so it should be taken up and the company will start functioning in the proper manner. Then next let us have a look into what is capital subscription. So, a public company can raise the required funds from the public by means of issue of securities. So, we all know that a public company is a one in which most of the public would have invested their money or a company where it has a shareholders from the general public. So, we call it as a public company. Now, this public company 
can raise required funds from the public by means of issue of securities. So what do we mean by issue of securities? So the public company can raise funds by issuing shares, by issuing debentures. So totality, we can call the shares and debentures as securities. So it has to issue a prospectus, which is an invitation to the public to subscribe to the capital of the company and undergo various other formalities. So before a public company goes, it has to invite the public for subscription. Now, before it invites the public for subscription of its shares, so it has to issue a prospectus. Now, what does this prospectus contain? So, this prospectus will be containing all the necessary information about the company. So, who are the promoters of the company? Then, what is the objective of the company and where the company is situated, who are the directors, etc. So, all the information relating to the company will be uh, mentioned in the prospectus and this prospectus, by looking at the prospectus, the public will get an idea of what the type of a company is and if the public is interested, he may just subscribe for that uh, kind of subscription of the shares. Now, the following steps are required for raising funds from the public. Now, suppose a public company has to come into existence and it wants to raise funds from the public. There are certain steps to be followed by the public company. Now, let us have a look into what are the steps to be followed here. So, first one is SEBI approval. Now, we should understand what is the full form of SEBI. The full form of SEBI is Securities Exchange Board of India. Now, what is the main work of this SEBI? Now, the main work of the SEBI is it is a regulatory body for all the trading in shares and debentures. So for all the securities which are being traded in India, this SEBI is a regulatory body. And because of this SEBI, it has made the rules that any company which goes public public or by any company which is having a public issue of shares, it has to disclose the necessary information about the company to the public. So, in case a com public company wants to raise funds from the general public, then it has to uh, get the prior approval of the SEBI. So, prior approval of SEBI is necessary for raising funds from the public issue. The next step in raising the funds is filing of prospectus. We know that what is a prospectus? A prospectus has to be issued by any public company before it goes for the public issue. So, in this prospectus, it will contain all information about the company. So, whenever a company goes for public issue, it has to issue the prospectus or it has to file the prospectus with the registrar of companies or it can also uh, file a statement in lieu of the prospectus. So, for a public company, it is mandatory to just file the prospectus, but for a private company, it is not mandatory. So, they can just have a statement in lieu of prospectus and then they can go ahead with their work. But then here in the filing of prospectus, we should understand that a prospectus is, has to be issued whenever the public issue is there. And in this prospectus, we will be giving information about the company, its owners, its directors and all the activities of the company. Then next one is appointment of bankers, brokers and underwriters. Now, what do we mean by appointment of bankers, brokers and underwriters? So, whenever we are having a public issue of shares, the a share application money will be have to be collected by the company. For this, the company has to appoint a banker and whatever the share application money received in the name of the company, it will be collected by the banker. Then, the next important appointment is the broker. So, these brokers are appointed to sell the shares of the company. So, he will canvas widely for the company and he will sell as much of the shares of the company. And lastly, the underwriters. Now, who are these underwriters? They are guarantors to the issue of shares. So, in case the public does not take up all the shares, then these underwriters will guarantee that they will buy that percentage of shares from that particular company. So, so, these underwriters are necessary for starting 
starting the company so if the company cannot have minimum subscription then the underwriters can just buy those shares and then the company can start its business then now the next important uh, step is to get the minimum subscription now in order to prevent the companies from going ahead to start the business with inadequate resources the register of companies has made it mandatory for all the companies to get minimum subscription of shares now what is the minimum subscription pre prescribed by the registrar of companies almost 90% of the issue should be subscribed by the public so this is the specified number given by the registrar of companies so almost 90% of the issue should be subscribed otherwise the company cannot go ahead with the allotment so in case the company has received less number of applications then the company cannot allot the shares make the allotment on such shares and it has to return whatever the application money it has collected from the shareholders so it is mandatory for all the companies to have minimum subscription of the shares the next step in the raising of funds is application to stock exchange now the company which is going for a public issue it has to get the approval from the stock exchange at least one stock exchange at least it has to get an approval now if a, the permission from the stock exchange has not been received even after 10 weeks after the submission of the application then such a company cannot go in for allotment of shares and it has to return the money to the shareholders there now the last step in the raising of funds is allotment of shares now till the time the shares are allotted whatever the application money has been received by the company should be there in the bank account itself it should not be touched by the company so whenever the shares allotted are less than the number of shares applied for then whatever is the difference amount it can be adjusted to the allotment money or this application money whatever has been received it can be refunded when no shares are allotted for any number of share applications then such application money should be returned to the share applicants of that particular company so in this way we should understand that share allotment process is a very tedious process and whatever the application money has been collected it should be retained by the company until the allotment of shares is completed so once the shares allotment is completed the allotment letter will be issued to the shareholders and those uh, share applicants who have not received any shares so their money has to be refunded by the company in case any of the public company the, it wants to raise funds through its uh, relatives friends etc then it can always do so without issuing a prospectus so it can do so by issuing a a statement in lieu of prospectus so these are the various steps in raising the funds from the public now let us have a look into the what are the differences between the memorandum of association and articles of association now what is the basis of difference the first one is the objectives so memorandum of association defines the object for which the company is formed so what is the basic objective of forming the company that will be mentioned in the memorandum of association whereas in the articles of association are rules of internal management of the company they indicate how the objectives of the company have to be achieved so where in memorandum of association we lay down the objectives of the company the articles of association tells us how the objectives have to be achieved now the next basis of difference is the position so this is the main document of the company and it is subordinate to the companies act now in the articles of association it is a subsidiary document and it is subordinate to both memorandum of association and the companies act so the articles of association should be in support of the memorandum of association then next one is relationship so memorandum of association defines the relationship of the company with the outsiders whereas articles defines the relationship 
of the members and the company. So this is something which is internal. So this is something which shows the external relationship of the company. Then the next important difference is validity. So the memorandum of association acts beyond the memorandum of association are invalid and cannot be ratified even by unanimous vote of the members. So whatever is mentioned in the memorandum of association, the company should limit its activities to the whatever is laid down in the memorandum of association. So it cannot be changed. So once the memorandum of association is formed, it cannot be changed. Whereas in the articles of association, all acts which are beyond the articles can be ratified by the members provided they do not violate the memorandum. So, any acts which can be changed in the articles, they can be changed, but then it should not be in violation of the memorandum of association. Last one is necessity. Every company has to file a memorandum of association. So this is a very, very compulsory document. Whereas in case of articles of association, it is not compulsory for a public company to file articles of association. It may adopt table F of the Companies Act of 2013. So it is not compulsory for articles of association. So they can always adopt table F of a Companies Act. So with this, we have come to the end of this session. Hope you have all understood all these documents related to incorporation. Thank you.